Welcome to mm -hmm. another episode of The Shroom. This week's episode is going to be a, a little bit different. We're not talking about television shows. We're talking about something that happened in our show this past week and how we're going to deal with it. Cameras over there. So we'll say hi to the camera. Um, let's talk about it. Let's okay. talk about um, this past Wednesday. Wednesday? Wednesday evening. Yeah. Um, a family from our show went on their way to a family meeting and they were, I mean, it was, they're calling it a car accident, but um, a mother and four children were um, injured very injured. seriously and the six year old died. The mother says she saw the car coming at her. There was, there were no cars almost on the street and the car just was flying straight at her. So she feels this is, uh, it's, she feels this was intentional. Yeah. Um, A terrorist attack, you can say, on, on the roads. Yeah. And uh, we all had a really rough time because like for us, our family, we we were there the Shabbos, the Shabbos before <laughs> for, for Shalashinis, and we had such a great time with the meal together, and we saw the kids, and suddenly you realize a horrible thing like that happened. And uh, for me, I couldn't function. I just, uh, most of Thursday, I was in bed with a book. <laughs> And then I decided, okay, there's Shabbos, I have to cook, okay, so I'll do a few stuff. And Friday morning I saw I was in this pretty much the same state and my kids had come to the beach. Wow. Yeah, and I really felt it was a good outlet for me. Wow. And um, being in the beach, realizing that everything is from God and releasing a lot of the pain and the anger and just the frustration that you can't really do anything about it. Um, so that was like for me a healing process. And I came back and I could put Jabez on the table. <laughs> um, so for me, we saw them the day before. Oh, there was wow. this um, the end of um, the mitzvah program. And uh, Emunah and Halil are very good friends in the same class. Um, and it was just unfathomable what happened. It was so, like, you don't absorb it. It doesn't hit you. Um, her group in B'nai Kiva, her classmates, they got together that night. Um, they, did, they, they did all sorts of activities which helped them put them in the active mode. They weren't passive. So they were immediately active. They were immediately doing and thinking how to do and, and what to do more. So that helped them. And they're, I mean, they're only 12 years old, but that put them on the right um, way, I think. Um, me, I, I just, I collapsed. I collapsed. I got a migraine so bad that I couldn't move. Because um, it's not something that you think about. You know, you see these people the day before, the Shabbat before, and you don't think about it, even though these things are a daily part of our lives, unfortunately. Yeah. Um, and people don't understand. I, I think people don't understand how we live and the danger that we face daily. I'm not trying to dramatize it, um, but we do face danger um, on the roads. Um, we do face danger just living. Um, and it, you don't think that it can happen to you. You don't think that it can happen to somebody that you know, somebody in your community. And I think the fact that it hit here makes it even more real um, and more, it makes me more vulnerable, I think. Um, we just came back from visiting them. Um, by Judaism, there's a process called Shiva. Um, and Shiva is a very, I think, healing, as painful as it is, I think it's a very healing process. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, definitely. I think whoever invented Shiva was a genius. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> well, Shiva, does, it's not mentioned in the Torah. It's more like the sages that, that decided that this is a great idea. Um, 
it really gives an opportunity to people to celebrate the life that was lived, to, to, to take it in very gradually and to be supported. Just having like a lot of people who come to listen to you and to hear what you have to say, that's amazing. I think it really gives you a place where you know that you're wrapped around with people. You don't have to worry about food. You don't have to worry about cleaning. You don't have to worry about anything. You just have to sit and be. And especially in our day and age, to, to be there, to be with the pain, to be with the loss, but also to be with the, the nice moments. Because Rivka was telling us how such a sweet kid he was, right. and how you right. still wear his shirt always on the right, wrong way. With and no shoes. No shoes. And, you know, so, so you, like, you like have a chance to like let him, let the memories shine, uh, let the love be there. It's not only the loss and the tragedy, it also inevitably brings the parts where we feel that we, we were like so benefited to have this soul among us and grateful for, for the years we had with this person. And, and it and is sad for what will not be. Yeah, yeah. So it, 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 it makes place, I think for all the feelings, for all the memories. And, and it also gives you a pause from life, from, from the day-to-day -day everything. Right. <laughs> and, and it gives you like sort of like a validation that it's okay, that right now, the only thing you have to do is mourn. Right. And, and I feel sorry for people who don't have Shiva. <laughs> <laughs> there's something to that I, I i can't really stick about it because i've never gotten through the process but i hear more and more people talk about it that it you know it's just so healing and so releasing yeah um i'm gonna pause a minute um i, I have to say that the emergency teams of the issue have been phenomenal they have yeah. been yeah. above and beyond i know that this is something that they are supposed to be doing. And I know that this is something that, you know, this is part of their job, even though it's volunteer position. Um, they have just been above and beyond. Every single action is was thought of, every single emotion was taken care of. And they made sure that the family got all the needs that they wanted. And that it's so not, um, it, it's so not, how do you say it? I made that, like, like, Normal. <laughs> um, they were just amazing. They should never have worked like this, but they were really amazing. Yeah. And I think that can also help um, the family acclimatize to their new situation. Yeah, and the realization here where, where we live, it's a small community. And like when my daughter got engaged, everybody is saying mazel tov, like it's their own daughter getting engaged. For sure. For sure. And and the same thing is like losing a child. We all felt it's like part of us. And um, they had like circles for kids to talk about it, to help them vent out their emotions. Mm -hmm. And a lot of groups of saying Tehillim, saying Psalms together. A lot of, um, over Shabbos, there was like, we got showered with love Mama, and uh, carbohydrates <laughs> from the neighbors, from, every, from, from all, all kinds of different places around it was beautiful. us. You just and felt this ginormous hug yeah. coming to you, yeah. that even though it's not your personal tragedy, you know, Ami Sarah is reaching out and giving, yeah. and it was just unbelievable. Yeah. And another thing that we did, I, I understand on your street, they didn't do it, but on our street, they did. <laughs> <laughs> so we had the third meal, the Shalash of us together. Nice. And uh, we, we sat in the street with, uh, <laughs> with our meal. Everybody brought something. Oh, beautiful. And there was like more food came from Shiloh, from our neighbors there. And uh, Yaron talked about there's a model that uh, Muli Lahid created. 
he was uh, in charge of uh, people in crisis up north on the border there. And basically what he says is that each person has their own way of coping with a crisis. Mm -hmm. Like some people are like more uh, into the mental and the mind part of it. They have to understand <laughs> what's going on. Some people are more emotional. They really need to vent out their emotions. Some people like need a hug. Mm -hmm. so, you know, each person has their own way and there are a lot of people into doing. Oh and he, he was very you know it was a little frustrating for me and we talked about it also for you that to see like so many people on the doing part and i couldn't i couldn't i couldn't go I close to the house till today i was i was scared i have to yeah. right? i was scared I, I i said to my husband i'm like you know i feel bad but i feel this like i'm scared and i, I said and, and so young he's like, do you want to come with me? And then all of a sudden I hear, you know, this one wants someone to go with them. And this one wants someone. It's, it's not easy. It's, it's not, not easy. easy. It's, not easy. it's important to do, but it's not easy. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you're right. I, I, I feel a part, but thank God there's so many people that, you know, I have to do. <laughs> <laughs> so the doers did. The doers did. <laughs> and we're doing it our own way. Yeah. At least we're trying to. Yeah. Um, um, wow. So, so you, you hit, you get this like big crisis, you get this big thing happening to you. And then, you know, you're like, you have all these questions. It didn't happen to me, but I have all these questions, you know, like why and why <laughs> and why, um, I think I want to talk about like what happens, what do you do with those questions? Like, where do you go from those questions? Cause yeah. I don't have answers to those questions. I mean, I'm, I'm asking some really deep questions and I have no answers well uh, a lot of things something I learned about God is I agreed not to understand it <laughs> <laughs> because I mean, there's certain situations that you say like we both are, are into happiness and talking about how everything is Latova, everything is for your better good. Right. Or is that a word, better good? Everything is for, <laughs> for your, your own good. Your own good, ultimately, ultimately. Right. But not necessarily at this point in time that you can even understand it or fathom it in any way. You can't, you can't. It's also for the ultimate good of your soul, not necessarily your body, not necessarily, um, you know, you can go through really terrible stuff. And that's part of what your soul agreed to when she came into this body and she said, oh, this is cool. I want to be whoever this one is, yeah, Shoshani, totally yeah, awesome. Shoshani or even Matan, you know, that we're doing this in, in his memory, we forgot to mention. We are doing yeah. this in memory of Matan. Oh, yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. So his sweet soul decided before it, it came to this earth that it's going to do this term of being only six years here and being so sweet and doing whatever he did here as a kid. And that was it. He didn't need any more time on earth. You know, we can't understand why. We can't understand. Why is this? It's, it's very hard to it's, understand. No, I can't it's, even it's not it. something that we can understand. I don't think it's up to us. It's like, you see, like, uh, let's say there's tapestry and mm -hmm. you see the backside of it. It doesn't make any sense, <laughs> and you're the you're the woman who does all all the time. Right. <laughs> and and so we don't get to see like the full picture of it. We don't. We see parts of it, parts of it, very small parts of it. And from what we see, we can understand even less. <laughs> you know, <laughs> sometimes you know how it is. Like you have the answer right in front of you, and you don't see it. Where's my keys? Yeah. <laughs> Right. So even if it's there, sometimes it's not accessible to us. We don't, sometimes we don't have the tools. We don't have the, the way to understand. Right. And, but, but I think what, what really helps me in these situations is to know that still God is with me. For sure. 
to know that this is part of his plan, right. to know that there is good in it. Even I, I can't see it. I can feel it. It feels horrendous, but I know God is there. The word Rabbi Nachman says that even in the deepest hiding of the hiding, of the it's hiding. like somebody yes. went hide and seek. He hi he hided, and inside that he found it like an inner right. hiding. Right. It's like right. so, even there, God is there, and that's what it feels like, and um, that really like gives me the comfort. And I could say it also about myself. Okay. Not only God hides, we hide also. Yeah. We run away. We run away sometimes to series or sometimes to a book, sometimes to something. We don't want to deal with these emotions. We don't want to deal with all that. Or what's doing. Or what's doing. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but, but like eventually, we also have God inside us. And eventually we'll meet with, we'll meet with God and we'll, we'll deal with it. We'll come to the Shiva. We'll do whatever we can do in our abilities. I think that um, also, I mean, it's not something I can say to Rivka or to Chaim right now, but ultimately from my own experiences, I, this becomes part of you. You know, it is with you wherever you go, um, wherever you become, whatever you do, this um, crisis, this mess, this disaster, whatever you want to call it, um, then everybody, can translate it into their own mm -hmm. way in their own way but yeah. you it's always with you you yeah. know like um my friend that died so she's always with me she's always and it, and it has become who i am the, my message to the world who i want to um recreate not her but the message that i took from mm -hmm. her mm -hmm. and, I, and i think that's um if i can if i can give rifka and Chaim any sort of bracha it will be that, that they are able to gather themselves up and raise themselves higher. Yeah. Um, not that they will never miss Matan because Matan will always be with them every single day. And I think he will also be part of the DNA of this issue now. A lot of times when something like this happens to you, mm -hmm. I think after the initial shock, after the initial pain and sorrow and all that, you do find a way to become maybe somebody else than you, maybe better than you were before. Maybe it also, it, I think the reason we have death in the world at all <laughs> is that we appreciate, we appreciate life much more because of the option of death because it's always there right? and you you get a chance to do stuff in the world that otherwise you would just continue your life maybe as usual right and sometimes it brings out a lot of good not that we would wish we would, no, no, we do not want that to happen to anybody. Nobody should have to go through this pain. Nobody should have to go through this this absolute crushing, crushing pain and, and emptiness. Nobody should ever have to go through it. Nobody should ever have to live through it. And I hope that we can all raise ourselves yeah. in, in his memory, in his honor to become better people and to do better things and to do more good in the world yeah um that that's i i i'm trying to think what i could even take from this and how i could you know apply it to myself um but the fact that the issue is is trying to build a talent in his memory and that was just like immediate that was like okay we're gonna raise the money for this and we're gonna find the money and we're gonna build this you know talent in his honor that's that's already an amazing thing that that um, like doing doing good and adding good to the world as a direct result of this. Um, I, I, I don't know. Well, this has been uh, recorded during the nine days, so it's very appropriate. Very appropriate. <laughs> and. Uh, 
we, we felt also awkward about doing like a regular podcast about right. series in the nine days and then we got a reason uh, not okay. to do it. And uh, hopefully next time uh, we, we will return. We will return, <laughs> to, return to all the time. So it was very important to us to, to have this uh, moment to stop and yeah. not only evaluate our own feelings, but to express our own pain and our own um, what, we're, what we're also feeling. Um, and I think that we have to direct our, our davening that we do have Beit HaMikdash, that we do have Mashiach, and then um, everything we will get in, in a new light, we'll have a new understanding, and we ourselves will be fulfilled because there will be no loss, there will be no all the light will be turned on in the darkness that we're living in right now. Yeah. Um, so, and also um, the purpose of the nine days, the way we learned it in the year when we studied with Ronit, was it's a time of, uh, you know, or missing, we, we miss. Yes. Reflection and, also. Yeah, and we really, really want this to happen. We really want a better place in the whole wide world. That's why Jews pray for it, for the temple to be built. It's not just, it's not the outside thing. It's like the inner process of the real light of God to shine on all of, on us, all of us, on the whole world. And like, I think when people are filled with light, they don't want to be terrorists, <laughs> you know? <laughs> It's so funny about that. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, they it's, don't want to do more. They they don't it, wanna... it actually, it, it's funny because it's like a, it's a conversation that we had in our house all the time. I always tell the kids, you know, like everybody's creative in God's image. Yeah. Everybody. And, you know, as Jews, we have to be that lighthouse. We have to receive the light and we have to reflect it out. But like, I mean, non-Jewish people also are filled with a divine light. They also have this divine godliness in them. But they, also Jews, also Jewish people, um, sometimes we forget that we're godly. Right. We forget right. that we have this divine presence and spirit within us. And people who do and commit acts that are not godly, they've forgotten. They, they forget um, that their essence and their soul and their spirit is godly. Right. They forget that. Right. So I, was, <laughs> I don't know why I left. Okay. <laughs> but they do. They, you know, we are all born with it. And I, I hope and pray that we all remember it. And we all remember every single second of every single of our lives right. that we're divine and that we're godly. And that, that God loves us. Yeah. And that will be the, what we're going to talk about next time. We're going to talk about love. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so if you have any suggestions or what, what the series should be, because I have right now two ideas. <laughs> uh, we want to talk next time about love. It's going to be two bav, close to two bav, um, uh, love holiday. The holiday of love. Yeah. <laughs> so, and it's amazing that it comes like a few days after after Tisha B'Av. Right. A few days about after disaster, um, we have a message of love. Beautiful. I love that. Yeah, I love that. So I really love that. We have something to look forward we to. We do, and something to move on and upward to. Thank you Thank for you listening, listening to, to the show. show.